Welcome to Lawyers in the House with Motley. Wish you had a lawyer in the family? Now you do. Here's your host, Veronica Waters. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Lawyers in the House with Motley. I'm Veronica Waters here with you. Thanks for joining us for what I hope is another fabulous episode in your book. By now, you have learned that personal injury firms, by and large, if not completely, always take your case on a contingency basis. With no out-of-pocket costs to you, they will pick up the mantle of your fight and charge in and not be paid unless you win and they get a recovery for you. So if that's how every firm does it, isn't every firm the same? Does that mean every firm does it the same way? This is a show about finding your Goldilocks of law firms and the firm with the right resources for you. Today, we've got two fabulous Motlick injury attorneys here with me back in the house. Some repeat guests whose names and faces you will remember. First, Nevis Jurich, who joined Motlick in 2018 and became a lawyer in what year, Nevis? 2016. 2016. And you had been a paralegal for the better part of a decade at that oh, point. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. So mm-hmm. you went to Georgia State University, finished in top 10 at John Marshall Law School. Yep. Um, Nevis is described as a creative and unwavering lawyer who never shies away from a challenge on even the toughest cases. Nevis, you said that you view practicing law as a real privilege. Why is that? Um the gratification that I feel every time I'm able to help somebody who comes to me in a time of need, in a time when their life is in shambles, uh, when they uh, feel like the system has failed them, um, they come to us. You know, these people are broken. They're injured. Sometimes they're without jobs. They're disabled. Uh, their world is really flipped upside down. And to know that we are able to vindicate them, get the compensation that they deserve and and uh, seek justice for them, it is the most beautiful feeling in the world. I don't know that I could re- replicate it anywhere else, honestly. That is beautifully said. Now, I have to say that from what I know about paralegals, they do so much, and they have so much legal knowledge Absolutely. already. But you decided to take the extra step. Do you remember what it was that made you say, let me make this pivot and go all the way? Yeah, it's important to note that, you know, attorneys are as good as the the team that surrounds them, right? Our paralegals, our staff, our assistants, they help us do the job that we do every single day. Um, they're, you know, well-versed and, and uh, knowledgeable in the, in the law field. But um, certainly there are things that they cannot do that attorneys can. And uh, w- after almost a decade of doing paralegal work, I knew that I wanted to be able to do all of it. And um, I was limited by the fact that I didn't have a, a law school education and a bar license. And one day I just woke up and I said, I think I'm capable of doing this part of the work as well. Went to law school, passed the bar, thank God. Um, and uh, <laughs> and that's why I did it, because I was limited in what I was able to do and how far I could help people, because there are certain things that um, assistants are not allowed to do ethically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so th- that was the the reason for my choice to to take it all the way. I love that. Thanks for sharing that with us, Nevis. Also next to Nevis, another face and name that you know, David Rubin joins us again here on Lawyers in the House with Motlick. And David joined Motlick in... About a year ago. About a year ago. Yeah, I think when I met you, our first show, you had only been there a couple of months. That's correct. Right? Yeah, it was probably about four months at that time. When did you become a lawyer? 2011. 2011. And you hopped around from... I've done. I've been at a few different firms around Atlanta, smaller firms, bigger firms, gotten a little bit of experience everywhere and um, and just found the right place at Montlake. You found the Goldilocks of law firms. I believe I did, yes. <laughs> so David Rubin got his degrees from University of Maryland and then Miami Law School. He is described as an aggressive and relentless attorney, and he works almost exclusively in workers' comp these days, right? That's correct, yes. Yeah. Mo- I mean, literally 100% of my my practice is workers comp right now what led you into law um, I'm from a family of lawyers actually I had a grandfather um, who who actually was the last class in South Carolina not to have to take the bar Wow got to become a lawyer without taking the bar so that must have been a blessing <laughs> I didn't even know that used to exist now, apparently it did <laughs> <laughs> back about 50 years ago and then you know my brother's a lawyer and um you know an uncle is a lawyer so it just not only did I have family of lawyers, but a passion for helping people, 
Um, and the opportunity to do that as a lawyer is really gratifying and, and, and you know, just helping people who are in a time of need. And, and it's, it's a blessing to be able to do it. Did you feel any pressure, any family pressure to go into law? Um, my, not necessarily. I mean, my parents always kind of dictated me towards the idea of, you know, of having a profession, something that, that is going to be here forever, that the, the, you know, being a lawyer, it, it, it's, it gives you the, uh, you know, type of experience and the ability to do lots of different things, but also it's going to be around, you know, it's not going to, in this world, lawyers are going to be here. Um, and, and I think they knew I was really good at arguing with people. So they said, you know, <laughs> law school probably makes the most sense for you. I love it. Well, no arguments here today. We are going to, we, we come in peace. We're talking about firm resources today with Nevis Yurich and David Rubin from Montlick Injury Attorneys. Nevis and David, thanks so much for being in the house with me again. Your girl, Veronica Waters, here on Lawyers in the House with Montlick. And we are talking about exactly what that means first up. I think that's the first thing we need to handle on deck, right? So when you're talking about firm resources, what exactly do you mean? Um, we mean that we are able to not only use our um, intellectual attention and detail and all the work and knowledge that we have to bring um, on behalf of ourselves and our entire team, but we've got the financial ability to help get other resources on board to help us make a better case for you. Um, in other words, sometimes some firms are not able to afford certain things um, that would help a legal case um, um, get better. Um, for example, today we're going to be talking a lot about accident reconstruction and being able to hire experts and um, being able to uh, get the data and evidence um, to make somebody's case when they might not even have one or they have a case, but it just needs, um, you know, more evidence and proof to to solidify it. Does finding a firm with the right sort resources mean that it's necessarily size based? Um, it, it, it can be. I mean, I think that you can have a small firm that's successful and you can have a very large firm that's successful. But Having probably the right amount of attorneys, which we believe Motlick has the right amount of attorneys, you have the ability to do everything, you know. And so, like, Nevez is mentioning things that, like, expenses. Well, some smaller firms, they may not be willing to put out the expenses that are necessary to actually mm -hmm. build the case to the point where it has the value that it deserves. And Motlick and Associates isn't afraid, you know, to, to put out the resources and the, and the costs that are associated with the case to make it, you know, make it, a, a, you know, a very successful result for an injured person. Um, we have investigators who we can send out to, you know, you know, look at an accident site, meet with a potential client, um, you know, and, and just all the different resources that some firms may not have. We have them and, and, and we're able to utilize them to, to our client's benefit. So it's partially about financial strength and it's partially about personnel strength. Yeah, they, they kind of go hand in hand. We have both. Um, we have, you know, great resources. You know, every attorney has multiple people in their staff. Um, you know, a paralegal, an assistant. Um, but there, it goes beyond that. You know, we have, you know, human resources types, you know, things. And that's all goes, that's all very important because you can't wear too many hats or you're not going to be good at any hat. And so, and so what we have is um, all the resources to, to benefit each and every one of our clients. So Nevis, you mentioned a case that really jumped out at you. So let's jump right into that. You were talking about um, a case that had something to do with accident reconstruction. So this is something that Pops in your head when you sure. think about yeah. So accident uh, reconstruction is the process of analyzing certain evidence and data that helps you determine why and how an accident happened, and that actually can become very very useful when you have cases that are disputed liability. Uh, the one case that I can think of on top of my head is a pretty serious injury that a client of mine uh, sustained when he hit a you know a large. A tractor trailer that was just disabled on the side of the road on a major in a interstate um, highway here in Atlanta and sustained pretty serious injuries. And the liability was, you know, disputed from the very beginning. Um, clearly, uh, although I am an attorney, I don't have the expertise that these experts have, right? These are people who are qualified. Um, they're, um, you know, engineers, and um, sometimes they have a policing background or uh, transportation background. And so we had to get a team of experts to help us, me and another attorney who worked this case, 
to show why our client wasn't at fault, although the police officer thought that he might have been, right? Um, The defense counsel was arguing that the truck had been disabled because they had a mechanical issue. They had no choice but to stop there, and they couldn't really move. And so it was really up to our client to keep a proper lookout and should have seen this truck. Well, the experts, the team of experts, alongside me and another attorney, we did everything in our power to prove that our client wouldn't have been able to see that there was this massive thing in the middle of the road in the middle of the night because they were lacking a lot of things that would have allowed, uh, you know, drivers and operators of vehicles to see it. Uh, So what was special about this case, uh, we conducted a 12, I think 10 to 12 hour uh, accident reconstruction with the help of like five different experts. We went out on a field, brought a similar truck uh, to the scene, brought a a similar vehicle to our clients to the scene. We actually helped set up part of the... um, the reconstruction site alongside with these brilliant experts who brought all their fancy gadgets and 3D things and scanners and all kinds of things. And uh, what we ended up showing is that a person uh, who was in a like position of our client would have never been able to tell that there was a massive truck disabled in the middle of the road. In fact, it kind of looked like it was a, it could have been a motorcycle just driving Uh, or another vehicle that really wasn't in the lane of passage that he would have been able to tell. And, um, you know, after 10 or 12 grueling hours of getting literally dirty in the mud on this field that we were in, uh, we were able to, uh, with the help of these experts, show that our client indeed wasn't at fault. Um, and we were over. We were able to overturn the liability, but but for the resources, but for these experts, but but for the money that we were able to uh, pay, we had to foot a bill that was you know over ten thousand dollars. Not many firms could do this, but we believed in the case, and we knew that we needed extra help from these experts who would later be able to testify in court or through a deposition or through written testimony uh, to make our case for us. And, I can't and imagine. Did. So two two reactions I'm imagining. The defense attorney mm-hmm. who is seeing this unfold before his or her very eyes. Sure. Right. And the client who probably came to you so desperate after mm-hmm. this accident. Yeah. It was a very contentious case. And I think it was clear to everyone on that field site um, that we were going to win this case. Um, you know, the client was elated at the at the end because he got the justice that he deserved. And this might be a case that people, you know, would have walked away from. But we believed in it. We hired the right folks, these experts who helped us uh, make a case for our client alongside our help, of course. Love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Nevis Yurich and David Rubin with us here on Lawyers in the House with Motley talking about firm resources. Coming up, how one attorney can have hundreds of years of legal experience on tap. Stay with us. Welcome back to Lawyers in the House with your host, that's me, Veronica Waters, along with Motley Injury Attorneys David Rubin and Nevis Yurich. And we're talking about finding a firm with the right resources for you. I have to say, the more that I've gotten to know attorneys from Motley, the more I see like this real camaraderie and trust among all of you. It does feel that way. It does. You know, you have the ability to converse with other attorneys at the firm constantly, you know, and Everyone in, in life has strengths and weaknesses. And so the ability to, you know, you know, bounce ideas off of other lawyers. I mean, we have 40 plus lawyers at Montlick and we're a national law firm. So, you know, we have the ability to um, to to grow as attorneys every day and to learn things from other attorneys. And, and no one's afraid to ask questions. I mean, I have attorneys who sit in the offices right next to me. And I mean, there has not been a day since I've worked at Montlick where we haven't had communications together. What do you think about this? What would you do here? And and it just makes it makes us all um, have that camaraderie and also, you know, better lawyers and, and get better results for our clients. It's amazing to me, too, when I said earlier before the break, it's literally like you have hundreds of years of experience, just like, you know, two, three offices down from you. Absolutely. We've been in practice for almost 40 years. Uh, We have attorneys who have been there for 20 plus, for 30 plus, for five plus. And 
um, those years of experience come with skill. And uh, certainly we concentrate in certain areas, but talking to each other, um, you know, bouncing ideas f- uh, from one another, that's the key. That is how you win cases when you have all these great legal minds getting together and, and um, using each other's strengths to better the case for your client. And yet you still make time to answer calls when people are calling the firm for the first time. Absolutely. Um, At Montlake, you will never not speak with an attorney initially. From the time that you call, you will speak with an intake person who will take preliminary information. They will transfer you to us and the attorney that you speak with and invest your time and pour your heart and soul out to and give all these facts. That will be the person who will be assigned to your case for the duration of your case. Um, You will always talk to an attorney. We have a legal team that helps us, uh, but um, there will never be a time that you don't know who's handling your case and being updated by your attorney about the strategy and what's happening on your case. And that's very unique to Motlick. And, uh, you know, um, a lot of times we'll talk to potential clients on a consultation, which is, you know, a free consultation when you call 1-800-LAW-NEED. And, you know, they'll say, you know, I've called other law firms and I never spoke to an attorney or I don't know if they're taking my case. I don't know what type of case I have. Um, And, and, you know, and that's that's the that's what separates Motlick from much of any other firm. Um, I've never heard of a firm where when you call for your consultation that you're just directly talking to the attorney and that attorney, if they decide that you have a case, they're going to be your attorney. So, you know, they're learning your case from the day that, that the day that they get your case rather than maybe a few weeks later an attorney's handed a case and they, you know, they're just learning. Amazing that in a time of your life when you're hurting and desperate for help that you might not even know that an attorney is actually taking your case. Coming up on Lawyers in the House, why timing matters. Stay with us. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lawyers in the House with Motley. I'm Veronica Waters here with Motley Injury Attorneys, David Rubin and Nevis Yurich. And wanted to let you know that you missed a heck of a first half of the show if you're just joining us. But don't worry, we got you. Just log on to LawyersInTheHouse.com for every episode, video and audio that you can find that we've ever done. And you can see all the gems that they have dropped so far. But you know what? You may want to listen on the go. So for that, Just go to your favorite podcast platform. We are on every single one and you can like and subscribe. And then when every episode drops, you'll see us right there. And keep up with us throughout the week on TikTok and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram because we're on every social media platform at Motlick Law. So I'm going to be looking to find you there. We're talking about firm resources today and finding that sort of law firm that's in the Goldilocks zone for you, the one that's just right in size and has all of the resources that you need when you are hurt through no fault of your own and you need somebody to fight for you, somebody that you want to feel like has really got your back and really cares about you. And it's not just maybe having the resources, Nevis and David, but it's also about timing. Absolutely. Um, Every listener out there needs to understand that there are certain deadlines and there are certain time limitations with every single case. Um, Now, we encourage people to call as soon as they can. I don't want them to think that if if they didn't call within the first week, now they've lost a case. But certainly, they need to call sooner rather than later. And in certain instances, especially when we are talking about accident reconstruction, we're talking about massive vehicles that were involved with our clients. Those are the types of accidents we're talking about. Those have very specific time limitations as far as preserving the evidence. Um, Sometimes we have to send out letters uh, making sure that these trucking companies are preserving evidence then and there. If we miss those deadlines, that evidence can be destroyed or disposed of or lost, and it can never be gotten again. Um, So we uh, we urge people to call as soon as they feel like they're injured, they need help, Um, They'll talk to us, like we talked about earlier, they'll talk to an attorney right away. Um, So we'll know what action to take and the action that's necessary to make sure we preserve everything that is needed for that case. But I don't need to freak out, David, if I didn't call like the day after. No, I mean, when in doubt, make the call. It's a free consultation. You call 1-800-LAW-NEED and you have the opportunity to talk to an attorney and, 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 and figure out whether or not you do or don't have a case. I mean, you could... You could question whether you even still have the time to pursue a case. Well, don't question it. Call us. It's a Mm -hmm. consultation. It's free. And we'll let you know what we think. 
Yeah, I think what's interesting to me is I remember that several of the attorneys I've talked to have said, you'll even spend time on the phone with a, a potential client saying, you know what, we can't take your case or we can't help you here. And here's why you don't just brush somebody off and say, you know, peace out, stranger. Absolutely. A lot of times people thank us for taking the time and being kind to them and explaining truly why they, they don't have a case instead of telling them some, you know, something, some excuse to get them off the phone. Um, sometimes people just need a peace of mind. And we're there for that as well. I mean, we're going to make a case for you if we believe there is one and there is one. Uh, but if we truly feel like we can't help, we will show you the respect and kindness and sincerity and explain why. And, and that, you know, that's all you can ask for. One of the things that is so cool to me about um, as I learn what happens in the hallways of Montlake is that <clears throat> there is a I'm guessing a dedicated floor or section that's just workers' comp. That's correct. Yeah, we have, um, I believe at this moment in time, we have about six workers' comp attorneys. And, and those attorneys are, um, you know, almost 100 percent working specifically on workers' compensation cases, which are very different from other types of mm -hmm. cases. And it really is important to seek an attorney who actually has that experience handling those cases. Um, they'll go a lot better in that regard. So how often does a workers' comp case sort of cross with a personal injury case? Well, actually, a lot of times um, you could have a um, car accident on the job and maybe someone else was at fault. So you could have the situation where, you know, someone committed negligence, they hit you from behind, but also you just happen to be working for an employer at the time of the accident. You were in the scope and course of your employment. And so therefore you could have two claims, one for the car accident for the person who had committed negligence, and then one with your employer for the fact that you got hurt while you were working. And in fact, Nivez and I have a case right now where we're both working on it together, where we have um, a mutual client who was in a car accident um, and but they just also happen to be on the job. Wow. So what's jumping out at you as you start going through this case, like how you are able to sort of put your heads together and pull everything together in one neat little package? I so, guess. yeah, talking about resources, if you have a, a personal injury attorney, someone who's dealing with the negligence side of the case and at a different firm, you have a workers comp attorney who's handling the uh, while in the scope of employment part of the case. You might not be able to share those medical records, the bills, uh, talking to the attorney to find out, do they have a mediation? Is the case ready to settle? Those are the resources that we're talking about, even just the sharing of information. You might not be able to do that with an attorney who is at a different firm, who has a different agenda, who might have a conflict of interest. I don't know. Um, so that's something that jumps out at me. It's just a phone call to David. Hey, you know, I need this. Do you happen to have it in your file? Or he calls me, you know, we strategize together. And, and that's the beauty of, of Montlink. You've got a team of people, team of legal minds working to do whatever we can to get the best result and maximize the value of your case. Are there some real ethical considerations that you have to consider and keep in mind when you're doing this sort of consultation back and forth? Well, I mean, obviously, it's it's a it's a confidential consultation. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is is that when you call Montlick, um, you're not you should have no fear that whatever you say mm -hmm. is going to get out to the public or anything like that. Some people will call and say, "Well, I don't really want to give you the name of my employer mm -hmm. or 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 even my name," and, and you know, and I'll, I'll remind them that you know it would I would be doing something unethical by 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 you know providing this information to anyone else. I mean, this is a confidential consultation. I love that you two are working on this case. Okay, let me take me behind the curtain for a minute. How how do you like working with each other? Tell it's been great so far. <laughs> I, th I think it's really great because, you know, you want an attorney who knows what they're doing. And so when when this potent this this client that we're referencing now, which we obviously can't name or anything, um, they, they now have two attorneys. They have one that knows what to do in a workers' comp case, mm -hmm. and they have one that knows what to do in a car accident case. And they don't have just one attorney who knows a little bit of both, mm -hmm. but not a lot of both and just gets a decent recovery, you're going to hopefully get a great recovery. So when you talk about this intersection of workers' comp and personal injury, just for example, because that's those are the two things that just my brain is still trying to wrap around how they how those things actually work. Do you have the same sort of experts, like medical experts? 
Yeah, I mean, we do because like, for instance, in the case that we have together, well, our client and one of the things that we do for our clients, one of the resources that we have is that we can get you to a doctor. We can help get you better. I mean, that's part of this process. It's not just a financial recovery. It's a it's a hopeful physical recovery, too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, right now, our mutual client is treating with a doctor and we're in correspondence together to make sure that they're getting all the medical needs that they have and that Mm -hmm. their bills are taken care of and that they get the, the recovery they deserve. Nevis, you and I have done a show together talking about long shot cases Mm -hmm. and how you really thrive on taking on the challenges of cases that other firms have rejected. Mm -hmm. When you are doing something like that, um, what does that feel like? When I'm I'm thinking about your the trucker case that you just told me about, Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, honestly, I'm wondering if that case would have been taken by every other firm there's a good chance that it wouldn't. Um, A lot of times, uh, certain firms will just look at a police report. If it says that the the client or the potential client is at fault, they'll just, you know, get rid of it. And they'll they'll say, call somebody else. Um, I take those cases as a challenge. Um, I, you know, thrive on the fact that if I if I look at a police report and after speaking to a person, if I feel like there is something that I can do to help them, I will. And I will fight. I will fight for them. I will employ the resources that we have at our disposal at Montlake. Uh, I will do whatever it takes uh, to help them win. Sometimes, you know, watching them come to me and thank me for, um, you know, winning a case that they thought was not winnable. Uh, one that an insurance company has denied, one uh, multiple attorneys have rejected. Those are some of the sweetest wins because they were so tough to get. And we don't shy away from that. We're, we're willing to do the hard work. We're willing to get dirty and, and, and do what needs to be done to vindicate people. Because at the end of the day, when you are hit and you are injured, you're the innocent victim. You are the person whose life has been changed um, and uh, if we feel like there's a case, we're not shying away from it. We will take it. Yeah, and I think actually, you know, a misconception is is that, you know, people probably think that, you know, what are the most satisfying cases, ones that with high value? No, really the most satisfying cases are the ones where you actually have done something to help somebody, um, and that may be a small case, you know, a case that was rejected by another firm um, or, or just a case that was very difficult, you know. A lot of times, the most satisfying cases to me have nothing to do with how much it actually settled for, mm-hmm. but what was what I was able to do to get that person both physically better mm-hmm. and get the financial recovery that they deserve. Yeah, I've, I've heard of, um, I don't know if, if this is something, do lawyers say, so I've heard this phrase called settlement mill, where it's like people looking for the most obvious cases to get into, um, and then, you know, they just kind of churn them out, you know, one after the other. And so as you and I have talked about with Mike too, Mike Moran, long shots are mm-hmm. something that really they're, they're not, <laughs> I don't know if it's fair to say they're commonplace, but they're definitely not rare. At our firm, no case is too big or too small. Um, and I think that's what different, differentiates us from other firms like these uh, settlement mills. Um, we're just the right size firm. We're the type of firm where you're going to get the attention like you would from a small firm, but you're going to get the resources and the financial backing and us being able to foot the bill like you would in a very, very large firm. At Montlake, you're not just a number. You're not a file that can get lost somewhere that was going to be shuffled back and forth and that you're never going to talk, get to talk to an attorney. From the get-go, you will have an experienced attorney Uh, looking over the facts of your case. If we feel like we can help you, it doesn't matter if the police report says that you're a fault. It doesn't matter if the insurance company has denied you. It doesn't matter if you have lost all hope. If you call us and it doesn't take anything but one call, free call, free consultation, confidential uh, consultation, if we believe we can help you, we will take it. It doesn't matter if it's a super small case, a super big case, if it's been denied, if we feel like we can help, we will. I would think that people who are calling you would hope that you would treat them like it was their own personal injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we talk to these people, you know, we all have families, mothers, fathers, you know, children, and you never know who's on the other side of that phone call. And um, I think we've got the intellectual capacity and emotional capacity to sense when people are in need and what we can do to help them and how to guide them through this very complex process. 
How big of a difference does it really make, David, at the end of the day, though, when you are picking a lawyer about how much they connect with you or not? Can you Have you seen the difference, really? I mean, I think that's an important thing, and that's why when you call for the consultation, you're going to talk to the attorney right away rather than, you know, a lot of firms you're going to call and you're going to talk to some sort of intake specialist. They make the decision whether to take the case, and then you maybe talk to an attorney a month later and you realize maybe that wasn't the right fit for you. And so like at Mo- when you call Motlick, you're going to talk to the attorney who would be your attorney right away. And so you can kind of gauge whether or not that's someone you want to work with. The attorney can also gauge whether or not, you know, this is a compatible relationship. Right. If, it's some, if they want to work with you. Right. <laughs> Working right now with David Rubin and Nevis Yudich from Motlick Injury Attorneys. Coming up, the Motlick Closing Argument. Welcome back to Lawyers in House with Motlick. I'm your host, Veronica Waters, here with Nevis Yurich and David Rubin from Motlick Injury Attorneys. And it is time for your favorite part of the show, other than segments one, two, and three. It's the Motlick Closing <coughs> Argument. Take it away. So, you know, we did want to mention that, you know, it's very important to realize that you only have one chance at your case and you want to make sure that you get it right. So having the right law firm will put you in the best position to get the kind of results that you want. Um, and, and we believe at Montlick that we have the, the, the perfect um, perfect opportunity for you to get the results that you want to achieve. Um, and, and also, if you call a law firm and they tell you that they don't believe that you have a case, you shouldn't rely on just one opinion. You should call Montlick and get an opinion from us because we take on lots of cases that other firms have decided that they didn't think was worth their time. And, and, and we, we get great results from them. And you've won. You've won them. Yes. Yeah. Not only that. This whole show has been about resources, right? Uh, Earlier I mentioned, uh, as it pertains to accident reconstruction, they're not just for a certain type of case. It's for every type of case. Whatever we need to do to get the data, get the evidence, get the proof to help you make the best case possible, we will do it. No, and and it's not just um, evidence in regards of like, well, we can preserve an accident scene. There's evidence like medical evidence, and we have mm-hmm. medical experts. And so when you call us, and if, if even if you have seen a doctor, we may send you to another doctor because it's really important to get not only great treatment but also the proper diagnosis um, to show that you know that your injuries are related to the incident that you um, that you were in. Because that might be something that's disputed by the defense or by the insurance company. Oh uh, well, I mean, in workers' comp, the most common thing that you're going to fight with the other side about is um, whether or not your client's injuries are related to their acts or not. You know, whether this is a pre-existing injury, it had nothing to do with this incident. And so if you don't have the right doctors and the right medical experts in place, you may fail to prove your case even if you could have otherwise. Okay, I got a pop quiz for you, David. If you were making the closing argument to me, the jury, what would you say to convince me that Motlick is the just right firm for me? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, we just have the, the, the right amount of attorneys, the right amount of resources. I've worked at um, several firms. I've worked at small firms and I've worked at big firms. And, 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 and there's, no, there's no cutting corners at Motlick. And I do feel like other firms, they may, you know, kind of cut those corners. Cutting corners. Nobody wants that in their personal injury case, right? You want the intellectual attention and you want the care and concern. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much to David Rubin and Nevis Yurich with Motlick Injury Attorneys talking about firm resources today here on Lawyers in the House with Motlick. You know, you never get a second chance to make a first impression and you only get one shot to be made whole when you are hurt through no fault of your own. Here's to finding the Goldilocks of law firms for you. I'm Veronica Waters. See you next time.